Good morning. Welcome to today's Commitment for Life service at Trinity. We offer a particular welcome to the Reverend Dr. Kevin Snayman, who is leading this service. Dr. Snayman is the Program Officer for Commitment for Life. As in previous years, during Lent, Trinity is asking for donations to support the work of the Commitment for Life program. You can give online by using the donate link on the Trinity website. If you use that, please identify your gift by putting Commitment for Life in the message box on the donate page. Alternatively, you can send a check to the church made payable to Trinity URC Wimbledon and marked Commitment for Life on the back. Thank you. Our call for wor to worship today is based on Psalm 22. Praise the Lord. Stand in awe of God, O offspring of Israel, and give glory. For God does not despise the poor in their poverty, but delivers those who cry out to God. Indeed, let us praise the Almighty, all those gathered in this illustrious assembly. Let us respond to this call to worship and sing together Beauty for Brokenness. You are so very welcome to this Commitment for Life service during Lent. Commitment for Life is the United Reformed Church's Global Justice Program, working in partnership with Christian Aid and Global Justice Now. We focus our attention particularly on four regions, Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories, Bangladesh, Zimbabwe and Central America, at least for the moment at any rate. Commitment for Life is particularly concerned with putting into place quick action in the face of the fast approaching global environmental catastrophe, and also with the creation of an entirely transformed global economic architecture that currently is so heavily biased against the poor and the planet. It is Lent at the time of this recording, and I came across this lovely Lenten reflection in the bulletin of Our Lady Queen of Angels, written uh, by Father Kerry, called Fasting and Feasting for a Lent when we have already lost so much. Fast from a gloomy outlook on life, feast on what is bright and cheerful. 
Fast from always being right. Feast on seeing another's point of view. Fast from always pointing out differences. Feast on what unites us all. Fast from words that pollute. Feast on those that purify. Fast from complaining. Feast on appreciation. Fast from self-pity. Feast on goodness in ourselves and in others. Fast from self-concern. Feast on going out to others. Fast from overdoing. Feast on time for prayer. Fast from worry. Feast on God's love. Today's lectionary reading is Mark 8, 31 to 38. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the human one must undergo great suffering, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd of his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful gener generation, of them the human one will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of God with the holy angels. First Sunday in Lent, traditionally a time to mortify the flesh through abstinence, fasting and prayer, designed to bring us more in line with God's will. You may be required, for example, to abstain from sugar or cheese or chocolate, or replace your roast dinner for a less than scrumptious split pea soup on this first Sunday in Lent, presumably without fried bacon bits, just in case this might make that vomit green meal slightly more palatable. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty much like lockdown has provided us all ample levels of abstinence already. Thank you very much. No travel, 
No holidays, no friends, no restaurants, no gym, no movies, serious levels of physical and mental health challenges. I think I'll be giving that pea soup a miss. In fact, the only thing you may want to consider giving up this Lent is your New Year's resolution. Our passage today is reminiscent of a family feud. Peter pulls Jesus aside and tells him to pull himself toward himself. He is not going to Jerusalem to die, but to win, to take the throne of the Messiah. Jesus realizes that Peter's tantrum is being witnessed by the rest of the family and puts on his best parental voice to scold the helpless disciple. What precisely is going on here? To understand, let us turn to some recent scholarship from the post-colonial schools of theology that try to locate Jesus in the context of the Roman Empire. Empire, says Council for World Mission General Secretary Colin Cowan, is, and I quote, a coming together of economic, cultural, political and military power in our world today, an encompassing global reality, serving, protecting and defending the interests of the powerful, corporations, nations, elites and privileged people, while imperiously excluding and even sacrificing humanity, exploiting creation. It is a pervasive spirit of destruction, self-interest and even greed. The worship of money, goods and possessions, the gospel of consumerism, proclaimed through powerful propaganda and religiously justified, believed and followed, the colonization of consciousness, values and notions of human life by the imperial logic, a spirit lacking in compassion, justice and showing contemptuous regard for the gifts of creation and the household of life. The absolute genius of Jesus, according to this field of scholarship, is that Jesus was able not only to see right through the self-aggrandizing propaganda of the Roman Empire, he was also able to resist the temptation to collude with it or to believe that working from within empire would, would be enough to bring about the kingdom of God. Jesus had faced that temptation in the desert and, and he had said no. Jesus knew that one cannot use the system of empire to overcome that system of empire. Something else entirely is required. That something else is what he called ecclesia or church. Peter, on the other hand, seemed to be caught up in a misunderstanding of Jesus' mission. Peter was stuck within an old interpretation of Messiah as the king that would come to overthrow the oppressor by means of the sword and to reclaim the throne of David. In some sense, you can hear the frustration in Jesus' response. Oh, come on, Peter. I don't have much time left, and you still don't get it? You think that replacing empire is the way to go? You want me to be some kind of mini-Caesar with all the wreaths of empire upon my brow to sit upon my throne? Ah, oh, get behind me, Satan. Jesus then turns to the disciples and explains the consequences of following this new path. Unless you stop playing by empire's rules, unless you are prepared to face death, and not just any death, a horrific death of crucifixion that is so favoured by the Roman Empire, you are really not ready to be ecclesia, to be the church. This is a deeply challenging text an interpretation of that text for all of us. Because to be honest, we are all caught up within the assumptions and the practices of empire. We are all still caught up in the global system that serves, protects and defends the interests of the powerful corporations, nations, elites and privileged people, while imperiously excluding and sacrificing humanity. We see this reality being played out right now in the terribly uneven access to COVID vaccines across the world. Winnibya Nyema decries the COVID vaccine apartheid that sees rich and influential nations standing right at the front of the queue, while poor nations are relegated to the back, some even having to pay double the price per dose compared with European nations. After months of attempts to secure their vaccines, the Palestinian Ministry of Health last week received 2,000 
of the 5,000 doses pledged by Israel to the Palestinian Authority. These doses were administered to the healthcare workers and those who are battling on the very front lines against the coronavirus that has already claimed 2,000 lives across the Palestinian territories. Despite being a world leader in its vaccination rollout, Israel has refused to include more than 5 million Palestinians living under Israeli occupation. Israel argues that the Palestinian Authority should be responsible for vaccinating its own citizens. But under international law, Israel as the occupier is compelled to provide essential health care like COVID-19 vaccines to the Palestinian population under its control. This is an example of how empire operates in Dr. Cowan's words, as it shows a staggering lack of compassion, as it justifies through powerful propaganda its enrichment of the elites at the expense of the oppressed and the poor. The PA has now received its first shipment of the Russian Sputnik V vaccine with 10,000 doses, just enough to inoculate the rest of its healthcare workers. What can we do then to pick up our cross in a time when the systems of empire are so incredibly powerful and all pervasive throughout the world? What we in Commitment for Life emphasize over everything else is prayer. We ask that people pray that God shines a light on the powers and the principalities of empire so that ordinary people can see through the propaganda and the lies and see the system of empire for what these are truly are. They bring nothing but oppression and death. Second, we ask people to become activists in whatever way they can, even in small ways. You can do so much as individuals and as congregations. You can listen to somebody preach a sermon on injustices. You can form small Bible groups to study these issues. You can make a noise. You can lobby your MP. You can create a, a podcast. You can have a, a, a YouTube channel where you talk about these sorts of things. You can step out of the destructive patterns of, of behavior that we are all caught up in. So for example, you can become more eco-aware. Most importantly, you can tell the truth. And then finally, we ask people to subvert the monetary system of empire. And we can do that through all sorts of ways, but particularly through generosity. There are so many brilliant ways in which we can share the wealth that has come to us because for at least some of us, we are the unwitting beneficiaries of the system of economics. For example, you can support organizations that focus on justice in Israel and Palestine, such as Christian Aid, MAP, Jews for Palestinian Right to Return, the journalist Jonathan Cook, and so many others. And so, prayers, be an activist, and be generous. Wouldn't that be a brilliant way to mark this time of Lent in 2021? God bless you and keep you and guide you in Jesus' name. Amen. We sing together, God in his love has lent us this planet. of concern. As today we're focusing in particular on commitment for life, we'll start with a prayer for Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories. Dear Lord, we pray for all the people in Israel and Palestine. Help us to seek peace, justice, hope and dignity for all people living in this situation. Help us to be their voice and help us to share their stories with others, even though there is uncertainty, indifference and opposition. Give us the strength to seek an end to the occupation so that both Israelis and Palestinians can create a better future for themselves. Help us to prepare a table of dialogue and opportunities for truth telling around us. We pray that people may start to witness small signs of hope and remember that they're not alone. 
For all our Christian brothers in Israel and Palestine, we pray the peace of Christ. Amen. In so many other parts of the world, basic human rights are denied to some of our fellow human beings. We pray in particular for the people of Myanmar and the Uyghur Muslims in China. May ways be found to bring about peaceful change so that all there may enjoy the freedoms we and so many other people have. We pray that you will give support to those who are working without violence to change the world for the better bringing about the peace and justice which we all deserve. We pray for the work of Commitment for Life across the URC with its partners Christian Aid and Global Justice. We pray for support in these difficult times. In Fair Trade Fortnight, we pray for the work of Tradecraft and for the Fair Trade Foundation, which works so hard to tell us about the situation of workers across the world and show us how we can help them by what we buy. <laughs> of COVID-19 continues in many places. We pray for everyone working to end it and for the many people working hard in so many different ways to allow almost normal life to continue. As more and more of us are vaccinated, we pray that a vaccine will soon be available everywhere, not just in rich countries. At home, we pray for all the organizations trying to support the homeless on our streets and struggling families. We pray in particular for the Night Shelter, Faith in Action and the Wimbledon Food Bank. We pray for our church and for support for all who are working to continue its work and bringing us together. We pray in particular for the team led by Sandy, working towards finding a new minister. <laughs> Lastly, we pray for ourselves. All of us are needy people whose needs are known to you. In particular, we pray for young people throughout the country whose education has been disrupted and for their mental health, which has been so severely affected. May they urgently get the support they need. We pray for our school staff who are starting to plan to bring more children back to school. In a moment of silence, we pray for everyone who has asked for support and for those known to us who need our prayers. All these prayers we bring you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for your wonderful support of some of the most oppressed and poorest sisters and brothers from around the world through Commitment for Life. Let us say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now, forevermore. Amen.